Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Self Helpless. I'm Kelsey Cook. I'm Delaney Fisher. And Taylor Tomlinson is joining us this episode. She just couldn't make the intro, but you uh, will be hearing from her in a moment. We are so excited today to be joined by such an incredible guest, Mike Berbiglia. He's a stand-up comedian, actor, director, producer, and writer. He's personally been one of my favorite comedians for years and years and years. Um, his book, Sleepwalk With Me and Other Painfully True Stories, was a New York Times bestseller. You might know him from Inside Amy Schumer, HBO's Girls in Broad City, as well as the films Trainwreck, The Fault in Our Stars, and Popstar. Uh, he also plays the role of Danny Pearson on Orange is the New Black and Oscar Langstra on Showtime's Billion. So you've probably seen him or heard of him prior yes. to our podcast. He's amazing. And uh, as of this year, he's also the host of a new podcast called Work It Out. And he's had on guests like Jimmy Kimmel, Hassan Minaj, so many more. So without further ado, here is our interview with the amazing Mike Berbiglia. It's all Basically. broken over here. <laughs> <laughs> A great, you a know great any? Special. Do you know anybody? <laughs> That's a great special title. All broken over here. <laughs> this is the promo for your episode, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, if you got, if you want to break right into it, it's like, it's like the pan, for those of us with mental health issues, the pandemic has not been a, a friendly pat on the back. No, no, Ooh, no it has not. not been a warm hug. <laughs> no, it has been an aggressive wedgie. Yes. It has been an aggressive wedgie, That's which true. apparently occasionally kills. Oh, sure the, wedgie it can, the wedgie can kill. I actually read what that What percentage? Recently. But what percentage of the time? Very low, a, a, okay. a low, right. low, mor low mortality on wedgies. But, but uh, <laughs> no, I was actually researching that because my next show, my last show, the new one was all about having a child in my next show, which is called the YMCA pool is all about death. And so I've just been researching the ways oh, people die. Oh, what a fun <laughs> deep so dive fun. during 2020. Yeah. yeah, I think it feels right. <laughs> so have I, but not for a project. So I've just been yeah, doing yeah. it for pleasure. Yeah. Well, the <laughs> interesting happen. <laughs> there's a lot of ones that are like really quirky. Like there's like a hundred something people a year die from coconuts falling on their heads. Hilarious. Really? Uh, okay. And my punchline was, do you eat the coconut? Because <laughs> uh, it is ripe. Um, and, the person oh, who's, and the person who's dead is also ripe. So you could eat both of them, really. <laughs> uh, but, you know, maybe no you hate... No waste, comedian. Both oh, are on the ground. <laughs> they're both, they're both on the ground. <laughs> Yeah, you got to come on my podcast. My podcast is literally that. It's working it out, which is you, we just work out bits. I would love so that. Yeah. I yeah. love the new up. one, by the way. Uh, Thanks. I saw that on Broadway. I was on the road by myself, like in between gigs on the East Coast. And I was like, I'm going to go see this. And it was so good. Wow. I loved it. Yeah. You didn't come say, but you didn't come say hello afterwards. No, I mean, this was like years ago, right? Oh, it was years it, ago. Okay. It was a couple years ago. I Because I only recently met you. Ago. Oh, yeah. okay. Which feels like 50 years ago. <laughs> I'm trying to think. I, I met you at the Comedy Cellar, if I remember, in the Village Underground space. Mm -hmm. Downstairs. That's yeah. when I remember I watched a set of yours. And I, I did have that sort of like, who is this kind of thing? When you, Whenever you see a comedian you think is great and you have that thing where for, i don't know about you uh, about you i see what's the you i, I don't say you guys because you're not guys i'm trying to change my speech pattern on that oh, you're okay. but i don't want to say you <laughs> ladies you <laughs> ladies understand <laughs> Wait, you so girls must word. understand you yeah, guys. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Please. how about y'all y'all <laughs> understand <Perfect. clears throat> terrible you, you, you people written on you your people shirt. you people get it <laughs> No, I know, but no, but yeah, but 
I, I feel like you comedians <laughs> would understand uh, this idea of like, sometimes all it takes is one joke from a comedian to know whether you like their point of view or you don't like their point of view. Mm-hmm. And, and like, I had that with Taylor where, where I saw her at downstairs at the village underground and I was immediately like, Oh yeah, she's got it. That's great. That's great. Oh, that's Aww. so nice. I'm such awesome. a big fan of yours. I have been for like years because sleepwalk with me came out uh i mean it was tw- we just talked about it. it was 2012 so i was like 19 yeah. i think and wow. i started doing stand-up when i was 16 so it was still pretty early for me and yeah. like you know kelsey was saying she saw it in theaters so everyone yeah mike wow. you're like one of my f- like long time favorite comedians oh my gosh. like i remember watching your sh- like 10 years I've been doing stand-up 11 years now like early early on starting and just being like oh my god this dude is fucking amazing so I've been a long time fan we're very excited to have you on whenever I like you too Mike (laughs) (laughs) whenever thanks Delaney whenever people (laughs) whenever people bring up how old they were when they discovered (laughs) me it makes me think I need to get better faster (laughs) Like, I'm not, like, the growth is not enough since you saw me. (laughs) Like, I should be hosting the Oscars. If you saw me at 19, I should be hosting the 2021 Oscars. I mean, I just turned 27. It wasn't that long. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I've been listening since the womb. Let's be real. Mm. (laughs) Okay. 14, Mike. I don't know if you know. man. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> so but we yeah. always ask we always ask our guests if they have a favorite or least favorite quote, motivational quote, self-help quote, anything like that. Is there something that comes to mind? The um <clears throat> the one that's been I've been thinking about a lot lately is is um there's there's a book by Byron Katie called Loving What Is and I'm going to, I might butcher this, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure you deal with insecurities about butchering someone else's philosophy, but like the gist of it is it's sort of cognitive therapy where you, when you have an extreme emotion, which I often do anger, frustration, or sadness is, 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 uh, to ask yourself these questions, uh, uh, is what you're feeling true? Mm. And the second question is, is it definitely true? which I think is a really oh. often, a very, it's a very telling question. <laughs> that, that's what yeah, usually- That's what it gets you, yeah. yeah. And that's it stops me, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then I think the third one is like, uh, uh, how would you feel if it weren't true? What would that make you mm. feel like if it weren't true? <gasps> and then I think the fourth one is, what if the opposite were true? Okay, can I, hold on. Good. I'm literally gonna write that down. <laughs> Yet. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Just say it's that huge. one more time because I think our listeners would want to hear it one more time too anyway. Say that again. So I think, again, <laughs> you have to look this up. Byron Katie, I think it's four questions, which is, is it true, the emotion you're feeling? Is it, is it definitely true, which I think is the most telling in my experience? Right. Um, and I think the, the third one is, how would you feel if it weren't true? Would you feel differently? And... And then the fourth one is, what if the opposite were true? Mm. And, and, and actually, you know what's funny is that because we're, we're among comedian friends, we can sort of analogize, analogize this to comedy writing, which I think is a lot of times you take a premise and you go, if this is true, what else is true? And then it's like, what if the opposite were true? And that's sort of like a lot of times that's the ABC of a joke. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah kind of that bubble chart of like, this is the main idea. And now like how many branches can we get off of this main idea? Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's what Taylor, when I saw your stand up, I felt like you were really like exploring all of those. Like, like when I saw your stand up, I was like, Oh yeah. Like she's not just like, you see comedians who write and you see comedians who don't write, but just are. And it's right. like, when I watched you, I was like, oh, she's someone who's writing. She's like doing the work of the job. Right. Oh, this one has to try. It's not just like, it, <laughs> I have to try pretty hard. I'm not just going up there like, it's me. 
I did it. <laughs> I have to work. But you know what's so? But how many people do we know who are the? It's me. I did it. <laughs> <laughs> that should be the title of a lot of specials. It's, it's me. me. <laughs> I did, I did it. it. It's me. I did it. Now I'm canceled. Now I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> it's a memoir. Me, I did it. Wait. No, I didn't. Wait. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I did. I didn't realize this was on record. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh my oh god. god. Um, Mike, when do you find that you ask yourself those questions? Is it when you're trying to like pull yourself out of making assumptions about things or when you're anxious or what? I don't think it's as rational as that, Delaney. Uh, It's more (laughs) like uh, when I'm, when I'm just, uh, mostly it's sad or angry, you know, it's just Mm -hmm. like when I'm in that place where, where I feel like, uh, like a claustrophobia in my existence Mm. And I'm, and I, a lot of times, and this is where like my last special, the new one came from was like hours and hours of free writing into a journal, like majority garbage, Mm -hmm. you know, like most of what I wrote is I hope no one ever reads it, Uh, but, (laughs) but then combing through it. And that's and then journaling is sort of a cognitive therapy in in a sense. Also, I always suggest journaling to people who aren't even writers. It's just like it's a healthy thing to to write out how you feel and what you're experiencing, and then read it like a week later, a month later, six months later. Like I've been re- I've been reading stuff lately that I wrote at the beginning of the pandemic in, in March, and it's helping me to sort of grasp like what the fuck happened. Right. Oh, just in terms of like how everything changed so quickly or yeah, are you looking immediate. back at how you've changed? I think, I think that how much I didn't know and none of us knew. Mm-hmm. So it was like this weird thing where it's like a thousand people have died so far. Right. Wow. Yeah. And I, I, I'm afraid this could get worse. Yeah. But it's like, you know, little did we know it's like 250 and climbing in November. Yeah. I mean, and just to, just to zoom out on that, I feel like we're so inundated with these like 24 hour news cycle, like this thing, this thing, this headline. And it's like, well, wait a minute. We were afraid that 10,000 people might die and 250,000 people have died. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And more also like, I think we started in March with the sprint mentality in terms of self-care and just kind of trying to stay positive through and be like, okay, well, this is, this is fucking crazy and weird. Uh, The next month or two might be weird, but we're going to get through it. And then kind of in the last, I don't know, maybe month or two, I've had conversations with people where we're like, oh, this is a marathon. This isn't what we thought. This is like the self-care that we have to have to keep our well-being, even just a little bit of crap level is it takes so more than we ever thought it lasted so much longer than we thought yeah and i don't know about you i don't i'm not great at marathons same right not yeah. a, not a uh, cross-country runner from high school i was just yeah. gonna stop it i'm not great <laughs> <laughs> yeah i, I, I was gonna guys? say i'm not great at i was yeah. gonna stop it i'm not great at <laughs> I'm not doing well. Um, yeah, I I think we all like, especially like Kelsey and I at the beginning of this, we were like traveling so much and doing so many road dates, and we were like, we need a vacation anyway. It's fine. Oh my gosh, wow. <laughs> it'll be a month and a half, and then it was so much longer. And yeah, the the just watching everybody get to a place is like, okay, we have to figure out a way to live our lives but also be careful and safe. And then all these people just going the opposite direction where they're like, I'm not going to even think this is happening anymore, which is like wild. Yeah. It's been, it's been an interesting year. I think we've had, everyone's had too much time to think. And I don't know if you've experienced this, Mike, where you've like, you know, maybe read books that you have been meaning to read for a long time and gone like, Oh, this would have helped my relationships a lot sooner if I had, (laughs) read this i'm talking about the bible mainly but yeah yeah no i've been reading <laughs> a lot of the bible <laughs> whatever works for you a lot of um, prayer. yeah i've been staying at a motor inn and i've been reading the bible at my bedside every night <laughs> oh my god yeah oh, no i, I actually marathon 
marathons and and reading books are in the same category for me in terms of <laughs> my skill level sure. uh, which is absurd because i released a book this year i wrote a book i'm able to write much more effectively than i'm able to read yeah um, should we cross off the top of your shirt then i feel like it's kind of false advertising right <laughs> well, I, you know what's funny is i'm good with books that have like this is near me but it's like just dr I'm, seuss uh, <laughs> is, uh, <laughs> yeah yeah i'm good with i'm great with children i burn through children's books and uh, <clears throat> and, uh pictures. you know and i i i i tell my you know i tell my daughter i'm much better at reading than her uh, she's five <laughs> But um, <laughs> this is called The Art of Memoir by Mary Carr. And this is a book that I pick up a lot. Uh, it, I think it's the best book I've ever read about autobiographical writing. And I recommend it to anyone who does any kind of writing and particularly stand-ups. It's, I mean, cause, cause in a, in a certain sense, all as stand-ups, all we're doing is memoir anyway, but just short form. Right. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I love about your style of comedy so much. Is it like, it does every show you do does feel like a memoir. Like, I mean, you, you hone these, what I guess a lot of people would call, I don't know if you refer to them this way as like a one man show, but they're so dense because you're working it out in comedy clubs yes. that it's like, it's a solid hour of jokes, but it's, it's got an arc and it's got these quieter moments and it's, but still having so many punchlines. Like, I just think you do that like so, so well. And it's really inspiring for, younger comics i think who are scared to open up that much about themselves personally and like feel like oh maybe i don't have that much to talk about and like watching you do an hour about being afraid to have a kid and deciding to have a kid i was like oh my god like this is like so that was like self-help for me watching that where i was like yeah oh, that's that's oh my gosh how you can do it you can do a whole hour about one feeling you had changing or like one relationship you had changing or, you know, your struggle with sleep, like, you just have such a great way of, like, doing it in such an entertaining, uh, joke-heavy, but, like, very powerful way that, uh, this is not a question, this is just me blowing smoke up your ass a little bit. I love it, I love it. It's just 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 turned into a really long-winded compliment, (laughs) but... Well, uh, I I, I can bring it back to Mary Carr, though. (laughs) Please do. (laughs) He has this thing, and it's it's partly like the thing you were saying earlier, but like what's a good quote? She has this thing about um, about basically like asking yourself tough questions as a memoirist, which is like, what do people like about you, and what do people not like about you? And mm-hmm. and like sort of be honest mm-hmm. with yourself about that. And mm-hmm. and she's like because like she teaches at I think Syracuse. And she's like, more, more often than not, like my students will come in and the first thing they'll write is very self-aggrandizing and like, look how good I, oh, it's like what we were saying earlier about stand-ups, like, look, <laughs> right. look at me, look how good I, what was the exact thing we said? I it's forget what me. it was. It's me, I did it. It's me, I did it. <laughs> it. <laughs> it's me, I did it. And, uh, and she says, that's what she encounters with her memoir students a lot. And then at a certain point, you have to get to a point of like, no, no, what's wrong with me? Because actually what's wrong with me is way more interesting than what's right with you. Right. Yeah. Which is of course fits into the podcast because you, you're trying to fix yourself. Right. right. Oh, that was the point I was trying to make. Okay. (laughs) Let me put a button on the long compliment. The point I was trying to make Hmm. is watching somebody do an hour where they're so honest about their faults and like something they struggled with and having this amazing, like, final product as a writer watching it uh and i would argue any writer not just a comedian is so helpful to watch somebody else have put something so difficult that they went through and turn it into such like a great piece of art i think that's like what's so great about your stuff i i definitely like it was a long trek uh to get there because like i in my 20s was chasing the thing that a lot of young comics are, which was like fame and a sitcom and money and all these things where you're like, that will fix everything. Uh, <laughs> if I could just get fame and notoriety and money and I'm a comedian, that is great. And then, uh, <laughs> and, then, uh, and then I went to Hollywood. I, I had a 
a CBS sitcom of a base on my life that was greenlit for pilot. So, which means we filmed it and like Nick Kroll was in it and Bob Odenkirk and Francis Conroy and all these really wonderful, oh my actors, gosh. much better yeah. actors than I am. And, uh, and, and, and we filmed it and we all thought like, you know, it was like one of those things like we're out, we're having dinner with the agents at steakhouses and all these things where it's like, <laughs> where it's like this is a little too good to be true. And then, uh, and then it didn't get picked up. And then when it didn't get picked up, it was almost like I like awoke from a trance or like a cult. Like I've been watching the vow and like <laughs> I didn't even watch the vow, like the, the, the deprogramming of the cult members I find to be really interesting. And, and like, it was almost like de- deprogramming from the cult of Hollywood, which is like, mm. which is the feeling of like, like if they give you a lot of money, that is the goal. And you're like, wait a minute, I didn't get into this for money in the first place. So like, when did that change? Like, what the fuck happened that I started caring about being rich? Like, when was that the goal? Yeah, right. So then I moved back to New York and I just pursued like these these small off-Broadway solo shows. And then eventually, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, now the last one was on Broadway. So that was, you know, exciting. That's amazing. How how do you um, take care? It took of your a long record? time. It took about fifty year, fifty or sixty years. Fifty sixty years. <laughs> wow! Mate, you look fantastic. Yeah. You look I mean, you so were, good, Kelsey. You were ni- you were nineteen when you saw the first one. I mean, I mean, I'm a seventy five year old man. Wow. Will you tell us what your skincare routine is after this? Because <laughs> whatever you're using, we'd love to know. Very I use impressive. up. I use Paul Rudd twenty five. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I made i did a joke the other day i go uh i go paul rudd doesn't age and i age like i have a disease <laughs> it's rapidly literally when i took the new one the show to hollywood well, to, to, to hollywood to la to the amundsen theater like a year ago after it was on broadway the, it was, a, I thought, sort of like a victory lap in Hollywood because it was like my face was on all like the lamp posts and shit. Like it was like, oh, this place that rejected me 12 years ago and sent me packing, like I'm back, you know. And the reviewer for the LA Times wrote, I really enjoyed the show. And if it becomes a movie, it must star Paul Rudd. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's fascinating. Because you know who else does some acting is uh, the writer and star of the show you just saw. Look, all I heard was, I look like Paul Rudd. And that was the reframe it, okay? That's all. That's hilarious. I mean, that's, what, that's what's so fun about LA is like, it does not care about you at all. Not you personally, in no, general. No, no. It doesn't, it doesn't love you, the non-specific. Yeah. How shitty would that be if we brought you on and just like buttered yeah, you up with yeah, compliments yeah. and then yeah, randomly yeah. just a weird mind fuck moment of like, by the way, Hollywood like really doesn't yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody you like, cares. <laughs> you specifically. This is an elaborate video message telling you <laughs> that Hollywood doesn't like you. <laughs> this is a very expensive cameo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> very elaborate um delaney you were gonna ask something right oh i was just gonna say what do you how do you take care of your mental health specifically with the ups and downs of this industry and also as a performer who is used to being in front of everybody and then had to go in quarantine and kind of be in hiding for a bit <laughs> in a way i it's wow it's that's a lot to unpack because quarantine mental health i think is different from uh b- the before times uh, mm-hmm. which is to say that like <laughs> corn, quarantine, it's like, I need to, I need to do like a certain number of steps on my Fitbit every day or mm. else I, I notice like a marked difference in my mental mm. health. <laughs> it's, uh, quite shocking. So that's like <laughs> yeah. a really straightforward one. Also yeah. journaling, journaling helps a lot. And then, I mean, a lot of it is, is like, uh, is like acknowledging what it is you enjoy and then trying to find some space to do that thing. 
So like it, there was like maybe a year ago or two years ago or 40 years ago. Uh, <laughs> but no one knows for sure. No one knows. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> that it occurred to me that I really enjoy going to the comedy cellar and just sort of talking to every any comic who's at the table who happens to come by. And, and like, I just enjoy that. And so I sort of carved out space in my life to make that part of my routine. And it's like, I don't know. It's the happy between that and like spending time with my wife, Jen and my daughter, Una, like those are my favorite, probably my favorite two things to do in life. And it's just sort of finding time to do that. Mm, Yeah. But it's like a lot of it's fucking scheduling. A lot of it's like staring at a calendar and being like, this space of time, I'm going to plan no things. Or this span of time, I'm going to plan to watch a movie. Yeah. You know, just, just something that seemingly you don't have to plan for, but maybe you actually do. Right. Yeah. Do you have any hobbies? Because you're such a comedy machine, I feel like. I, I wish I had hobbies. <laughs> Everything becomes part of the act, you know? know. It's, it's like it's like I in my twenties I picked up the guitar as a hobby. Next thing you know, it's on a special. I'm singing a fucking country song. I mean, like, what am I doing? Like every I mean, it's, fortunately I haven't picked up like beekeeping or some shit where like I was like, oh, it's there's the beekeeper comedian again. He's bringing his live bees. <laughs> the fun to the funny bone in Omaha. Yeah, it's like a very NACA, you know, like set up a booth. Right. The beekeeper comedian coming to Scranton. Oh yeah. By the way, you're talking. You're talking about a much better financial situation than I'm in right now. <laughs> like you're talking about. I mean, Kelsey's joking, but like, if you took that to NACA, which is like a college booking conference where they do book entertainers for the year. And you had the beekeeping suit and the bees and you went up to the, you had a, a old timey microphone and you had a bunch of bee <laughs> jokes, a bunch of, you would book your year. You'd be a millionaire. You'd be like yes. Daniel Tosh with a fucking house on the, on the ocean. Oh yeah. I leaned in fully to the gimmick a year ago at NACA and my college agent rented a foosball table for three hours for our booth so that I could do my foosball <laughs> joke and then tell kids at the end of my set, if you beat me, I'll give you a free t-shirt. And sure enough, there was a line around the fucking corner. It's so to play What's the joke? <laughs> What's the, tell me what the joke is. Oh God. I mean, it's, <sighs> it's a whole, do you know anything about like the foosball stuff with me? No, no, I'm sorry, I don't. Oh, okay. she's oh a like world champion. Oh no way, really? She's insanely good at foosball. Like she yeah, gave away no free T-shirts at NACA. Like it's she's insane. She's insane. Whoa, that's <laughs> yeah. amazing. Thank you. My my parents met playing in a professional foosball tournament in the '80s. So like I, I literally wouldn't exist if it weren't for foosball. And wow. somehow what she's still those... hot. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know how. <laughs> well, you know, the thing about those little foosball men is they can fuck each other. <laughs> That's the part I left out of the joke at NACA. Um, because, you know. But, yeah, yeah people should know NACA is very clean. It's a very, NACA's like, very clean. It's, it's also very Christian-ish. Like, it ha- like yeah. I did a lot of NACAs. Okay. I did a lot. Like, like, my early career was just, like, I probably did 10 of them or something. Wow. I mean, I've, I've probably oh played like God. three, 400 colleges in my life. Jesus. That's amazing. I've that's... been to all the UWs in Wisconsin and yeah. <laughs> oh. And them. honestly, the fact that you still look as young as you do is a miracle. If you've done that many colleges, like they age you <laughs> so quickly. They age you so fast. Oh yeah. So you got, you've both done a lot of colleges. Yeah. Col- NACA is how I, uh, like quit my job at 20 because same, I, same. yeah, it's, you know, which when you're 20, you're like, this is great. Cause all my jokes are about being 20. So I really, right. but then I made enough money doing colleges. Cause I booked like 50 colleges and then was on the road all the time, quit school. And then as soon as I was paying my own bills, everyone was like, we don't know what you're talking about. Our parents gave us a credit card and we <laughs> eat in the cafeteria. Right. And we don't have any real right. world experience. So, 
you age out pretty quickly. But yeah, Kelsey and I have both done uh, a lot of colleges. It it's was great at, when you're starting. It was during a knacker run of colleges that I, I, I sleepwalked through a second story window. Right. That, no I booked at, that I booked at NACA, yeah. Oh my God. It was a Pacific Northwest NACA. And okay. I, got, I got booked at like, I think like, pa- like UW Pasco and, and Whitman oh College and University of Oregon and like all of these Pacific Northwest I'm schools. from Washington. So everywhere oh, you're no saying kidding. is like, uh, yeah, all those places. Yeah. So it was like, so it was like this thing where I, no joke, I, I, was, I think I, that stretch of shows was seven colleges in six days. Yeah. Which is to say that some of them were nooners, which yep. the listeners might not know is when you're booked at a college to perform in a cafeteria <laughs> for people who are not planning to watch comedy. Yep. They are planning to eat lunch. <laughs> yeah. I had I had I had a show once. I had a, they call them nooners. I had a nooner once. Yeah. I showed up at their cafeteria. They just place you there with like a, like a one, you know, a portable one foot up step that's like technically a stage, and <laughs> no one. It was like it was like I was in. I was like I, like people were in line to get sandwiches made for them, mm-hmm. and I was performing to those people directly, and. Uh, this is the kicker. The show was reviewed by the student newspaper. <gasps> oh, like he wasn't strong. Like he really <laughs> wasn't good. And like people didn't like him. And I was just like, no, no, it's not that. It's that no one wanted me to be there. It was an inconvenience. Yeah. yeah. If you got spaghetti at nine in the morning, you wouldn't be like, this spaghetti is terrible. You'd be like, this is not the time for spaghetti. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not the this is not content. spaghetti hour. <laughs> Wait, but Kelsey, I'm so, uh, Kelsey, I'm so sorry that we got sidetracked from your foosball because this is way oh. more interesting than my jumping through the window no, story. No, it's truly uh, not. We, we need to talk about, if you want. She has a web oh, series. But, yeah, it's oh, you have a great. web series about, about it? Yeah, about she just football, played yeah. Brian Regan. Like, she just, it's just her smoking. Really? Like, I yeah, do would love to have you on if, oh, I'd if love you're it. up for it. But yeah, when we're talking about like that nothing is left as a hobby anymore, like we're such vultures of our own lives of like, but what can I put on the television? And so yeah. like <laughs> this thing that was just my fun hobby I've loved for <laughs> my entire life, I then was like, well... <laughs> Let's do something with it. Sure. Like now it's been a web series for the last few years, but anyway. Wow, I can't wait to see it. I'm so oh, sorry. Nice. I, I feel so. I, 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 what's it? Tell me what it's called. It's called Risks of Fury. It's on YouTube. I, I can send you a little link okay, on Instagram great, afterward great. if you want. Risk of Risk, Fury. Risks of Fury. You're very sweet. Like, Risks of Fury. Risks Risk of Fury. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you ever want to see Freddie Prince Jr. <laughs> get his ass handed to him in food. Wow. Wow. So you <laughs> used to, so, so your college agent, which, which college agent can you say? A uh, summit. Uh, okay, yeah, I remember. Something? I remember. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, <laughs> I did the circuit. I did the circuit in such a big way. Like I not only know the comedians who did it, I know the agents who do it. Like I, I know, oh, you know whole, everybody. I know the culture of the whole thing. <laughs> okay. So I'm like, like yeah, summit, summit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But but the foosball, that's such a good angle. So you go up and you do bits about being really good at foosball and your parents meeting from being Mm -hmm. pro pro foosballers. And then you'd play foosball like at your booth. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's and and oh my God, I can't even imagine. So when you would do the colleges, would they ask for a foosball, you to bring the foosball table or would they have one set up for you? So we had only, this was not that long ago. It was about a year ago. And then it was two weeks COVID. ago. It was two weeks ago. <laughs> so we had only done like the one conference really before uh, like that started. And then obviously COVID and all that. But my, I mean, my college agent is super smart and was like, this is the perfect thing to bring to the booth. So he just rented one for a few hours. Um, but yeah, I mean, if there are future ones, then I think we would probably keep trying to do that. Wow. Yeah, so anyway. smart. That's huge. <sighs> Thanks. Yeah. It's a weird, a weird <laughs> carny life I live. Um, but can you talk more, if you're okay with it, about the sleepwalking incident and like how how you've been able to incorporate that into like 
your act and, and taking care of yourself and all of that. Well, it's funny. There's a, there's a, uh, this is sort of a, a self-help related uh, observation about the sleepwalking show and also me jumping through the window. I started writing sleepwalk with me uh, before I jumped through the window. Because really? it was yeah, because it was a persistent problem for I years. Didn't know that. Like I had a lot of anxiety and I would sleepwalk. And I just thought, yeah, people sleepwalk. You know what I mean? Like I just yeah. thought like and I but I, I did think it was odd and I, I I thought it was odd enough to write jokes and stories about. And so yeah. I had like this story about, you know, my jumping up on the bed and in with when I was living with my girlfriend and realizing I was on top of like a, a VCR or, or like a TiVo. I'm literally oh listing gosh. like a series of um, technology items that don't exist anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I was on top of a PlayStation. Yeah. It was, um, I was, I was, I was turning uh, butter in my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I Very was, odd. uh, yeah, I was I was chiseling rocks, and I realized <laughs> I'm sleeping. And uh, <laughs> the, uh, no, but I was on top. It was it actually was a TiVo, which is a DVR. Uh, yeah. And and I and I fell, you know, I fell off that, and like would end up with scratches and and things. Wow. And and it would, and then I started writing this show about sort of being in denial about you know the show is about being in denial about my career being in denial about my relationship that i knew should end but i couldn't say it and i was in denial about the serious sleepwalking disorder that i should have been going to a doctor about and i didn't do it and then and then in the and then in the process of writing it i'm and i'm talking in the process like 3 years into writing the show I cool. jumped through the second story window sleepwalking. Wow. In in Walla Walla, Washington, after performing at Whitman College. This is a detail I never I, I it's in, never in the sh- it's never in the show because it's anticlimactic, but it's actually kind of a of weird detail. And like I feel like because you do NACAs, you'd understand why I did this in a unique way. After I jumped through the window, they put 33 stitches in my legs. And I had glass in my legs and I was bleeding, all this stuff. I went back to the motel in Walla Walla, the La Quinta Inn, the La Quinta Inn. I, I paid for the window. I swear to God, I paid for the window. Oh it was like God. 300 bucks. Wow. <clears throat> I checked out and then I drove across the state to University of Oregon to perform at the final gig on that run of shows because I was so broke that I actually couldn't give up the gig and not do it. Cause you just need that check. Yeah. Like you did that with 33 stitches, stitches in my legs and they had no idea. The audience was 500 people. I have photos. I used to take photos of my audience on stage back then in my twenties. And I, I have a photo of the audience from me on stage. Like, to this day, and they had no idea that the night before I had jumped through a window, which is which is the ultimate case of like, you really don't know what people are dealing with. Right. Right. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Oh. How, That's what, not. How, how does one manage uh, having a sleep disorder? I know nothing about this topic. Like what is the the therapy or the, what do you do? So, so I went to a, a neurologist who specializes in sleep disorders and uh, I went for a sleep study. So like they put all of these like electrodes all over your body to monitor what's going on in, uh, you know, inside of you as you're sleeping. And it's, it's, uh, you know, it's, mo- it's all over your face and it's monitoring your, like your brain activity and stuff like that. And then they diagnosed me with what's called REM sleep behavior disorder. Believe it or not, you know the DSM? It's the book that they teach people about neurological disorders in med school. I'm in the DSM for REM sleep behavior disorder. Whoa. Gosh. It you made, made it. I made it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's me. I did it. <laughs> yeah, it's me. I did it. I'm in the DSM. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 
I so, yeah, I'm in the DSM for that, and then Keith Robinson is in it for having a stroke on stage. So oh my no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, 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 no. I was just trying to think of another comedian who had like a serious thing happen. DSM comedy edition. Yeah. 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 It's like the chicken noodle soup for the soul, but it's like for yes. comics disorders. Well, comics are so broken. It's like Seinfeld has that thing about like, we're not more broken than other professions, but I'm like, no, I think we are. I think we, I think we're more broken than other professions. Yeah. I think we are. And we think we're, we're like narcissists about it. So I'm sure. Yes. That's just making it worse. Yeah, that might make it worse. Because other, I don't think, I think other professions are broken. I think everybody's broken probably, but we're looking at it all the time. Yeah. And talking about it. That's true. Yeah, no, that's true. I think that that's Seinfeld's point. It's like, if you, I've heard this, like him say this in an interview before, but it's like, I think he says like, if you zoom in on like, the field of like postal workers or, 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 you know, whatever, dentist, psychiatrist, whatever. It's like, you'd find the same thing. You'd be like, oh, that's a troubled profession. Right. But maybe not as, maybe not as at high a percentage. Yes, possibly. Yeah. Where it's more like, oh, that dentist is crazy. Instead of like, wow, that comedian is well adjusted. Like you're surprised for different reasons. (laughs) Yes. No, I think that's true. Yeah. The other thing is like, we were talking about like hobbies and how like, I've hit this point where like, I just feel like I have to, this is a, I, this is sort of a self-help thing too. It's like, I feel like I just have to lower my expectations of what level of joy I need to achieve in, in a day. Like I've reached a point where I'm like, if I enjoy 20 minutes of my day, I think that's pretty good. <laughs> like, I think if I yeah. enjoy 30 minutes, I'm basically a Buddha. <laughs> that's so funny is that a bit working on it, it, it really I, it's funny. it's not in the show but it's like a, it's just a thing i keep sort of toying with that's really funny i'm gonna think about that every day now if i enjoy 20 minutes of my day because it's so sad but it's so real yeah <laughs> it's kind of a relief like you're om- you saying that almost just gave me permission to go like yeah, I guess if there's a 20 minute window, I feel happy this year. Good job yeah. for that day. And it's yeah. like, I, I do feel like I put a lot of pressure on myself that if I wasn't happy the whole day, then it's like, well, another failure, another failed day. And it's like, maybe I just need to adjust what my expectations are. That's or maybe we're all yeah. broken. And maybe that's not, I don't know. I don't know. But I think that's why like, you know, to having, having, talking about like the deepest, darkest things with your friends is like the best form of therapy in some ways. Totally. Yeah. Just to say that like, if you can vocalize that and you hear back to you something in that, in the same universe, like that in itself is cathartic. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I tried to do a joke about this, but it didn't really work because I think people were like, oh, we're here to laugh. Don't talk about death. Um, but I used to do about like, when, the only <laughs> send them, uh, by the way, Taylor, send them to my show. They love my stuff. <laughs> Mike's better at comedy than me. Um, when I get good enough, I can do it. But I try to do a joke about like people not liking movies. And I'm like, if I didn't think about death for two hours, that was a great movie. Like I, I really am just trying to yes. distract myself. No, no, you're absolutely right. Death all day. No, and by the way, to be clear, I wasn't complimenting myself with that joke. <laughs> oh, I, I was know. saying, I was I saying, send that. them to my show because they, uh, their expectations will be much lower. They'll be like, no, no, he's <laughs> he talks about death unhumorously for ninety minutes straight. <laughs> Go to Mike's TED talk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we didn't yeah. take it that way at all. <laughs> yeah, okay. But yeah, I mean, it's it's a, uh, I don't know. How are you? Can you tell me how you're feeling? You, you three, like how, like how are you coping in all of that? Oh, what a loaded question, Mike. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's loaded day by for day. me to come on the self helpless podcast <laughs> and ask you for maybe one or two tips, Kelsey. One or two tips. How dare you? How, I am leaving my living room right now. I am walking from my bedroom uh, 
into the other part of my bedroom in the studio apartment. <laughs> Goodbye to you. <laughs> Good day, sir. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about you guys. I'm pretty up and down. I have days where I'm like, we're going to be okay. And then I have days where I'm like, I guess that's it. I guess I should have enjoyed it while it lasted. So I think I go, the panic and anxiety goes up and down. How about you, Delaney? To be honest, uh, um, I really like (laughs) being inside. I'm a huge introvert. And so when this first happened, I had a lot of guilt for how much I was enjoying it and how much it gave me permission to not do stuff I didn't feel like doing anymore. And so I felt like a shitty person for actually having a good time. (laughs) And now, um, yeah, I think I have to actually remind myself to um, not stay in my bubble because I've really liked being in my bubble. And so I have to remember, wait a minute, you should probably like reach out to the, that friend or go and do something because this, this time has all has basically given me permission to do what I've deep down wanting, like I've wanted to be doing. <laughs> and that is a weird, um, that's a weird feeling. And, uh, it's been a very conflicting for me. Delaney, and- I, know it's, I know it's your podcast, but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go out on a limb and say that that was not helpful at all. <laughs> <laughs> She is truly like the community asshole. Like we don't, that, those are always the answers where she, it's like, makes everybody else feel like a giant piece of shit. And we just but, have to. Well, you, that's literally to your point, Taylor of like, was that a bit like one of my bits right now that I'm working on is like, is, is literally about how like nothing is as it seems in the pandemic. Like the other day I was talking to my friend. He's like, I'm having a good pandemic. I'm getting a lot done. And like a week later, he's like, we're getting a divorce. (laughs) And a week after that, he's like, I've murdered my grandmother. You don't need to know the details. I have Irish citizenship and I'll be at the Zoom pottery class on Tuesday. (laughs) That's so funny. And the next week, he's like, I started gardening. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 that's speaking of which, that was actually a joke. If there is a if way to plug, that is a joke that I will plug. I'm doing virtual shows for God's sakes. Sa- oh, yeah. Sam was the one who told me that I should because he he was like, I like it. I was like, if you oh, like yeah, it, he did a couple. Yeah, I was like, if you like it, I'll try it. Yeah, because I, I think Sam's a, I think Sam's a riot, and I I think he has a lot of integrity. I mean, like, and so I was like, yeah, if you tr- if you like it, I'll try it, and then I love it. I mean, I, I love I it took, too. Oh, you do it too. You do it too. I love it. And I, I know that's an unpopular opinion. Now I sound like the Delaney of the group, but like, <laughs> I know that liking Zoom shows this year is an unpopular opinion. And I, I mean, of course there've been like one or two where, yeah, technical glitches, stuff like that happens where you're like, oh, this is kind of annoying. But overall, I, I've had some really positive experiences and it just feels good to connect with people i like that i wearing my fucking slippers it's like i don't know it's kind of i've kind of embraced it in certain ways i did this whole thing where i i i I took my office and i had a cinematographer virtually light the room with professional lights um and three cameras so it's like a it's like i turned my office into a soundstage and then I do like, oh. I do like a weekend instead of doing one show, I do like four shows, like over Thanksgiving, yeah. I'm doing like Friday, two Saturday, one Sunday, like a comedy club. And then that weekend, it's like, it's like a club. It's like the same set all weekend. Yeah. That's wow, That's great. That it's so a great cool. idea. Um, but so to your point, uh, to your point, Delaney, about being an introvert, I have a joke <laughs> that is in my book about, because my wife is an introvert. She feels the same way you do. And I say, the joke is I go, my wife is an introvert. I'm an extrovert. An extrovert is someone who gets energy from being around other people. And an introvert doesn't like you. <laughs> <laughs> or she might like you, but she's going to need me to explain why we're leaving the party. <laughs> that is so over- good. Thanks. I have been struggling with overworking, though, because I am inside and I'm doing all these things in one in one place. So that's, that's a big, that's been a problem is I haven't been like resting as much as I probably should be during this time. Doesn't she make. (laughs) I I never. 
weird and it's a problem. Yeah. Oh no, everybody froze. Can you guys everybody, hear me still? Are we frozen a bit? I can. I can. I Kelsey froze for me for a second, but that was it. Oh, oh okay. Well, I'm but, recording my audio on my end, so it should be okay. Awesome. Yeah. Um, okay. okay. All good. And then, right. and then Kelsey, what is your advice, or in the, or if you want to choose Delaney's version of it, uh, uh, non-advice or hostility? <laughs> hostility. <laughs> <laughs> Helene <laughs> attacked. Um, <laughs> my advice, gosh. Uh, I mean, I've when you're asking like, how are you guys doing this year? So I got divorced a week before COVID hit. No and, way. Yeah. So I've this has been a particularly you know tough year of a lot of huge changes in my life. And um, I can I, I ask a personal question? Sure. Were you in a Mormon fundamentalist cult? Because <laughs> how young were you married? Oh, well, um, I, I met my ex-husband when I was 22, and we were together for eight years. Okay, got it. And got so, it. got yeah. Got it. Long, mm-hmm. right. It's um, an inappropriate question, then. It's an inappropriate question, actually. Oh, it's, I, that makes me think that you think I look young, which, you honestly, you this year, I will absolutely like, yeah. take that compliment. Okay, so thank good, you. good, good, good. Thank you. <laughs> um, so for, I think for me, what's been helpful is just really, really trying to focus um, a day at a time. And I know that's a lot of meditation too, is trying to be present. But if you feel like your life is changing so quickly um, that it can feel overwhelming, we talk about it in the, do you know the book, The Artist's Way? Yeah, I love it. I love that book. I love where she talks about that um, in this exact moment right now, you're okay. And like in the very yeah. next exact moment, you're okay. And so trying yeah. to just, it, it can get overwhelming for me. And I'm sure for a lot of people this year, um, if you are somebody who's plan oriented, which I've always been, always been very like, okay, what's coming up on my schedule. Uh, it's hard this year when we don't know what's happening. My comedy calendars changed so much. So trying to really take things like a day at a time, an hour at a time, um, be, kind to myself, like not yeah. expect too much of myself. And so that's why it resonated with me so much when you said, if I'm happy for 20 minutes today, maybe like, maybe that's yeah. a good starting point and just go from there. Yeah. Delaney, you guys, Delaney's I have Delaney. to, oh, go ahead, go ahead. oh, sorry. I have to hop off. I have a call. Um, I was, I did not <laughs> oh look at the, God. I did not have, the, I was not looking at the clock. I was really <laughs> enjoying this. Um, I enjoyed 20 minutes of my day and now I'm going to be late. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for doing this. I'm just burbigs.com, uh, B I R B I G S.com. And then, uh, yeah, I have the working it out, uh, virtually shows coming up Thanksgiving and Christmas, which I actually haven't announced yet, but it's going to be. Perfect. Sounds good. There you go. Thanks again. All right. Take care. Oh man. That was so fun. <laughs> He's so, so good. funny, dude. Yeah, he's definitely he's another one of those guests that we could talk to for for hours and hours. Oh yeah, this could have been an eight hour episode for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we do have an iTunes review of the episode. This one is from Mary Max sixty four. It says, "Love it. It's probably not healthy to replace real friendship with a podcast." <laughs> <laughs> so funny. I love it. Uh, but, <laughs> but whatever. It's COVID. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> feeling, yeah, feeling this one hard uh these ladies are so genuine smart and hilarious listening through the backlog and loving every episode so helpful in all caps i love it mary mac thank you so much thank so nice you. such that a great review funny. yeah <laughs> funny one-liner and oh my gosh you know you guys leaving us i start i i start itunes ratings and <laughs> reviews of five stars um is the thing that keeps us on the chart and itunes so if you haven't yet as always please take a second to go leave a rating and review it really truly does help us it is great yeah and then you know when we're on the charts other people find the show we get more people in the facebook group community people you know get more friends. It's just wonderful all around. It's the best. Yeah, it is the best. Um, Kelsey, do you have anything that you want to plug of yeah, any just kind before we real sign off? Quick, uh, just a reminder, I'm going to be headlining uh, Helium Comedy Club in Philadelphia December 3rd through the 5th. So you can get tickets at KelseyCook.com or follow me on Instagram at KelseyCookComedy and uh, the link is in my bio.
Amazing. And I'll just uh, give a shout out to my new podcast, Efficionado. If you are an entrepreneur who is looking to start or scale a business by simplifying, basically, do you want to increase your revenue, but also increase your free time, head over to Efficionado. Or if you're just looking, maybe you don't run a, run a business, but you're just looking to free up some time for yourself and do more of the things that you enjoy. That is what the show is all about. And then for Taylor Tomlinson's um, show dates, uh, is it ttomcomedy.com? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can follow Taylor. Yeah. You can also follow Taylor on Instagram at Taylor Tomlinson because I know she posts uh, the links in her bio as well. Perfect. There you go. Cool. We love you guys so much and we'll uh, talk to you soon. Sounds good. Bye, guys. Thank you guys so much for listening to Self Helpless. We really appreciate it and would love anything you can do to help the show grow and get the word out. So if you could leave us a five-star rating and review on iTunes, that helps us move up the iTunes charts. If you can tell a friend, a coworker, a family member, anybody that you think would love the podcast, you can also screenshot an episode and share it in your Instagram, in your Instagram stories, anything helps. Also, if you want more of the show, if you want bonus episodes, if you want to be able to be more interactive and help choose podcast topics, you can go to patreon.com slash self helpless and join there. You guys can follow me on Instagram at Kelsey Cook Comedy, on Twitter at Kelsey Cook. You can go to my website, KelseyCook.com, which has links to my online makeup course. You can listen to my album, Savor It, on Spotify and iTunes, and you can watch my foosball web series on YouTube called Risks of Fury. How about you guys? Where can people find you? You can follow me at Taylor Tomlinson on Instagram and Twitter. My website is ttomcomedy.com. And you can watch my one hour special streaming on Netflix right now called Quarter Life Crisis. Awesome. And you can find me at delaneyfisher.com. That's where you'll find information about my one-to-one consulting and my online courses. So basically, if you're a business owner, podcaster, or comedian, uh, and you're looking to either start those things or grow those things, you can reach out to me for more information. I also have an email list at delaneyfisher.com where I share my favorite tools, tips, treats, and free shit. And then we just want to say a big special thank you to our wonderful editor, and the Erdbrink and our fantastic associate producer, Humaira Nuwaz. And you can find everything that we all just mentioned at selfhelplesspodcast.com. <laughs>